everybody was kung fu fighting for real this time. <laughs> Geki Geki, Juken Sentai Geki Ranger. Hello and welcome to Earth Alien Protoman. Today I'll be taking a look at Juken Sentai Geki Ranger, the martial arts themed 31st season of the Super Sentai series. Let's get to it. After rescuing a woman in his jungle home, wild man Jan Kondo soon joins civilization and learns of Geki Juken, a family of martial arts based on the movement and abilities of animals. But when he encounters Rin Juke and Akugata, the malicious bestial martial artists that are were once dead counterparts to Geki Juken, Jan joined forces with his fellow students to protect humanity as Juken Sentai Geki Ranger. Geki Ranger is hardly the first martial arts themed season, as both Hikari Sentai Mask Man and Gosei Sentai Dai Ranger had already done that. But Geki Ranger has its own interesting quirks on the subject. As alluded previously, the show is one of the few to give more focus on one particular character over the others. John Kondo, the wild Geki Red, is the subject of that focus, as many episodes display his lack of understanding of the modern world, as well as his willingness to learn. But along with his peculiar upbringing, he's developed his own way of putting feelings into words, as referenced in the title of this very video. As a martial artist, he throws his whole self into his tiger-style fist, personifying the idea of an unbreakable body. But that's not to say the other characters are completely overshadowed, as the other members of the Geki Ranger Triangle are given plenty of time for development. Geki Blue, Retsu Fukami, is an accomplished artist and uses delicate and deliberate movement in his jaguar-style fist. Geki Yellow, Ran Uzaki, is designated as the captain of the team, making her the leader of the Sentai. Unfortunately, this position is less noticeable compared to other female Sentai leaders, notably Ninja White and Time Pink. That having been said, she uses rapid, agile strikes in her cheetah-style fist. By focusing their energies, the Geki Rangers are able to summon their spirit animals in the form of the pseudo-mechanical Geki Beasts, allowing them to battle opponents that have grown to giant size, merging them into Geki Toja. After learning various weapon-based fighting styles, they are also able to summon Geki Beasts to give Geki Toja more fighting power. And after the Geki Rangers tap into their more powerful Kageki abilities, they gain access to more powerful Geki Beasts, which can then combine to form Geki Fire. Shortly after attaining their Kageki forms, the trio are joined by the long-lost Geki Violet, Retsu's older brother Go Fukami, who utilizes the Muay Thai-inspired wolf-style fist. His Geki Beast is a wolf that can combine with duplicates of Jan and Retsu's Geki Beast to form Geki Toja Wolf. And finally is Geki Chopper, the rhinoceros-style fist user Ken Hisats, who helped to create the Geki Ranger's weapons, and while he only knows the basics of Geki Juken, he makes up for it with the sheer strength of its abilities. Rather than summoning a Geki Beast in the same way as the others, Geki Chopper's mech, Sidein, is just that, a mech. But with its ability to transform into the humanoid Sidein, he helps the others battle even the strongest opponents. Aiding them are their teachers, the Kensei, martial artists that had taken on animal forms during their prior battle against Rinjuken Akugata. Following the battle, they swore off fighting themselves, choosing instead to mentor the future generation of Geki Juken users. There's also Miki Masaki, a major executive at SCRTC, pronounced Scratch, the company that makes the Geki Rangers equipment, and former student of the Cat Kensei, Shafu, as well as her daughter, Natsume, who are the closest to recurring civilian characters this show has. But, truth be told, I don't really care much about the heroes. Now that's because Geki Ranger gives quite a bit of focus to the villains, mainly former Geki Juken student Ryo, a user of the Lion Style Fist, who resurrected the Rin Juken in order to open a path to growing even stronger for his own reasons. Aiding him is the Chameleon Style Fist user Melee, who is infatuated with Ryo and serves him loyally, and commands the other beast fighters, the Rin Rinshi, to inflict pain and suffering on the innocents. While not actually a villain, when the Rin Rinshi grow to giant size, the Flyle style user Bai, whom was once swallowed by Melee and now has a symbiotic relationship with her, commentates on the battles, acting as a ringside announcer for their gargantuan matches. 
To further his quest for power, Ryu even goes as far as resurrecting the Kenma, the Rinjuken counterparts to the Kensei, powerful warriors that seek to conquer the world for their own ends. And behind the scenes is the mysterious Long, an enigmatic individual with his own sinister agenda. Earlier I said that Geki Red is given more focus in this season compared to the other characters, but most of that focus comes late in the season, and while I'll avoid spoilers, it is a major reason why this season gives quite a bit of focus to the villains for once. As a result, Juken Sentai Geki Ranger is a rather unique series that I suggest giving a watch. Until next time, I'm Protomet. See ya.